Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, are you ready for us to call in our daily bread? Join me now as we declare, say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread today. It is coming to me now and I give you praise for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, praise God. Now you'll be wondering, why do we do this every day? Jesus said we should. Praise God. When he was teaching the disciples the Lord's Prayer, he said, give us this day our daily bread. Now someone say, oh, that's, that's, that's Jesus walking on earth and he's teaching them his Old Testament. Come on now. Come on now. Praise God. <laughs> As long as you need daily bread, so no, but he has given us. It's not because of the death of Jesus that he gave us all things. He had given us all things right from the beginning. So all those arguments are unnecessary. Jesus said, pray like this. You just obey him and release your faith and get it. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right, let's go into today's broadcast. Father, we bless you. Thank you for your living word. We give you praise, Holy Spirit. I declare right now as your word comes forth, burdens are being lifted, yokes are being destroyed by the power of your spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You will guide us into every truth as we submit our hearts to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of of Hebrews. Now, last week we began talking about something very, very important how God sees to it. Now, what does God see to? He sees to the truth that everything He has provided for you gets to you. Praise God. And that's what the Lord said this month is about. He said, This month I will see to it. Isn't that amazing? And you know, we took our text from Genesis when Abraham went to sacrifice Isaac as he was commanded by God. And God said, Hey, stop. And, and, and he, the Bible says he lifted up his eyes and, and looked behind him and saw a ram that God had kept there. Now that was, that was God and then he named that place Jehovah um, Jireh or Yireh like some, some depends on the tongue you use, praise God. And which is God sees to it. He sees to it that your needs are met. He sees to it that his promises to you is sure. He's, he just sees to it. And that's exactly what your life is going to be about. From this month, you will begin to realize that God himself will see to it. Praise God. And then, now we began to look at what God has actually done. The foundation that God has set. Is it because understand God is a God of process. He is not one who just jumps in and, and starts doing things. No, no, no. He, he actually, he finished his work even before the world began. He finished his work. Yeah. He finished everything he needs to do. So what's going on now? As things are coming up, they are just all falling into place. Praise God. So... And I told you last week that I'll begin to talk to you about the man Melchizedek and the priesthood of Jesus after the order of Melchizedek, which is very important to what we are talking about. Now, as let's look at Hebrews chapter number 6. And we're going to read into 7. Now, Hebrews 6 verse 20. Well, first of all, let me... Let me do a little recap in Hebrews chapter 5, talking about Jesus in chapter 5 and verse 8. 
Good. It says, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Notice, it says Jesus, he was talking about Jesus. Number one, Jesus learned obedience by the things he suffered. And by those things he suffered, he learned obedience. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation. I want you to get that. Jesus became the author of eternal salvation. But there is a clause to it. What is that clause? It says, unto all them that obey him. See? Jesus is the author of eternal salvation. But those who will see eternal salvation are those who obey him. Are you getting what I'm saying? You see, sometimes people just think this thing is a confession and declaration kind of thing or laying on of hands kind of No, sir. No, sir. The, your, your continuous stay in salvation is simply determined by how you stay in him and obey him. You don't stay in him by confession. You stay in him by daily obeying his word. Listen. Even if you are born again, you know, people say, um, uh, with, once, once you're born again, you're eternally saved. Jesus is able to save you eternally. Get it? But it happens by you staying. See? So you wake up one day and say, I don't think I want to be saved again. And then you walk away, you stop obeying the Lord. You will die. You see, because what sustains us, he says, man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The day you stop receiving the word of God, you start dying. So, so if someone loses salvation, of course you lose your salvation. You lose your salvation. If, if, you don't, if you're not sustained by his word, how would you live? And when you don't live, you die. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. So those who are eternally saved are those who continually obey his word. Not when they feel like, no, they live by his word. Now those are things I'm going to be showing to you now. Watch this. So he says, he's, he's the author of eternal salvation unto them that obey him called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And then he says, of whom we have many things to say and had to be authored, seeing ye are dull of hearing. So he said, look, when he mentioned the name Melchizedek, he said, man, there's, there's a lot to tell you about this guy. But man, we can't even talk about it now. The reason is because <laughs> you can't even receive it. See, it happens. There are times we want to share some things and then you look at the people, you, you just... Try to see that the, the many foundations you need to set before you say what you want to say. And like, hmm, leave it. Just, just leave it. Now, he goes on. And then he began to talk to them about getting from the foundation again. And then he comes to chapter 6 and verse 19 and 20. He says, he says, which hope we have as an anchor of our soul, of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil whither the forerunner is for us entered even jesus made an high priest forever after the order of melchizedek now remember where we read before in chapter five he says oh there's a lot to say about this man but you you just can't get it now and then he began to take them through a series of teachings in chapter six and then he got here talking about jesus again and he said he is made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now we go into chapter 7 verse 1. Then he says, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the most high God. See the description he's giving to him. Who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. Follow this now. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, being 
first being by interpretation king of righteousness and after that also king of Salem which is king of peace I want you to take note of these words he is called the king of righteousness and then also he is called the king of peace then verse 3 says without father without mother without descent having neither beginning of days nor end of life but made like unto the son of god abide abided a priest continually now watch this he's describing melchizedek and he said this is the same melchizedek that met abraham when he was returning from the slaughter of the kings now you find that in in genesis 14 he was returning from the slaughter of the kings and then he met melchizedek and the Bible said, when he met him, he gave him tithe of all. Now, that was the origin of tithing. Now, follow me, because everything I'm sharing with you is very important. The origin of tithing came when Abraham met Melchizedek. Now, then you now want to wonder, so how did it come about? Melchizedek taught Abraham to tithe. Follow me now. Melchizedek, before Abraham met Melchizedek, people just have this idea that Abraham just saw Melchizedek and said, oh, let me, let me, let me pay tight. <laughs> no, no, no. When Melchizedek met Abraham, Abraham recognized that this man is not an ordinary man. Abraham had eyes, <laughs> eyes that see God. Yeah. You remember several times, you know, you remember the, the one when he was at home and then God was walking by with three angels. The Bible said they were walking by. They, they, they passed by Abraham's house, but they didn't go to knock on his door. They didn't come to Abraham. Oh, we are coming to you. They were just passing by. And Abraham looked and said, no, these, these men are not normal. See? So he said, hey, why don't you come over here? And, and, and let me at least wash your feet and make something for you to eat and before you continue your journey. And like, hmm, smart man. Praise God. You see, listen, what, the Lord told us something that this, this, this month, one of your prayer points should be that he will give you eyes that see. Eyes that see. So Melchizedek um, met Abraham just the same way Abraham saw. So he, he looked at this man and said, no, this man is not normal. And then he approached him and they began to have a conversation. Now Melchizedek didn't, wasn't just found by Abraham, you know, like, like, like he was doing something and Abraham was passing by. Oh, who is this? Oh, this man looks special. No, 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 no. The Bible says he came specifically to meet Abraham. See? You see, you, you need to understand God. When we walk with God, now anyone who genuinely walks with God can confirm this to you. When you walk with God, as you go higher, there are certain times, there are things the Lord will want to communicate with you. And then the truth is, there is no man he can trust that he has given that revelation and understanding that can come share it with you. So he would have to come himself. There are new things God wants to introduce that nobody has known or understood. You know, we may have it in patches here and there, but nobody has understood this body of, of reality or truth. Now, sometimes God will have to show up himself. And you hear people say, an angel came to me and was sharing this. Thing. I'm not just talking about, now there are different appearances of angels in scriptures and in real life, yes. But what I'm telling you is deeper. This one, when, when, when he's done with you, you will know that you have received a real divine visitation from the Lord. Because the things he will share with you are things that you will look around, you can't find them anywhere. And I said, anyone who genuinely walks with God to an extent will confirm this to you. Why do you think God does that? Because the truth is, there is nobody he can trust to share those things with you. So he comes himself. That's exactly what he did with Abraham. Now he was going to introduce something on the earth 
with Abraham because Abraham was the one he has trusted who will obey him and walk with him. So that's how he brought the revelation of tithing. Now our time is up, but I'm going to continue from here. Listen, if you have not liked our page on, on, on YouTube, if you have not subscribed to our page on YouTube, do so. Because I don't want you to miss any of this broadcast. And turn on the notification so it will remind you that the broadcast is on. And then you can play it and, and listen to it. God bless you. We're going to continue from here tomorrow. Listen. Have a receiving day today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bye-bye.